Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are in the fifth Sunday of the season of Lent. Next week is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. So this is our last Sunday in the season of Lent for me to say, how's your Lent going? Great. Yeah, good, excellent, glad to hear it. This is our time together in the presence of God. This is God's welcome to us. So I want to invite you to just Help yourself be here in this moment. Let go of anything else that you might have come in the door worried about. If you need to, stretch your neck and wake up a little. Shake off your hands if you have any worries or stress. Kick your feet if you need to move, just to make sure you're fully here in your body. This is a place and a time for us to be in God's wide embrace. Every human is welcome in this space. Well, animals would be as well, and plants, but you know what I mean. Every person is, is at home here in this space, and God is smiling at each and every one of you, glad to see you here. We are glad to see each other here. I invite you to turn around and look at somebody and smile at them. Make sure everyone feels super welcomed to be in this space today. And for those of you online, please take a moment and center yourselves and smile at one another. And if you're by yourself, know that all of us are smiling with you and God is smiling. As my children used to say, God is happy at you. You know, it makes sense. If someone's mad at somebody, then the opposite is they're happy at you. So remember, God is happy at you today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us in these 40 days and who sustains us with the gift of grace. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus so that all would know God's love and receive new life. This promise is for you. Say it with me. This promise is for you or me. You can say it either way. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn.
Let us pray. Wondrous God, your Son came into the world to free us from all the destruction of sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first lesson is from the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, beginning with the first verse. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, These bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. And then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Our second lesson is from the eighth chapter of Romans, beginning with the sixth verse. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Reading from the Gospel of John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And again, this reading today is a very long one. If you have difficulty standing, please feel free to sit at some point in the message or in the Gospel reading if you need to. God will be still smiling at you. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, And are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed home. Martha said to Jesus, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into this world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up and quickly go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because it's already he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Can these bones live? The prophet Ezekiel described the most amazing vision he had where dry bones came back to life with the spoken word and with the breath of God in the prophet's mouth. I always thought that was such a powerful story, but never in my wildest imaginations did I ever think I'd see something akin to this with my own eyes. But it happened. My brother, Lazarus, had gotten sick. And I mean sick. And he got worse very quickly. It was moving so fast. My sister Mary and I, we sent a message to Jesus. We knew he would want to know, and we thought for sure he would come. All he'd have to do was lay his hands on him, and I know he would have been fine. 
But it all happened so fast, and Jesus didn't come. And before you know it, my brother was dead. We were just devastated. We, we couldn't even believe this had happened. Our, our baby brother, how could it be? And within a day, folks started coming to our house from Jerusalem. Waves and waves of them. Lazarus knew an awful lot of people. There were professional mourners, of course, as is always the custom. But even beyond that, by the second and third day, there were so many people outside our house wailing and crying that you'd have thought a dignitary had died. It was both comforting and troubling. And it was on the fourth day that we heard Jesus was finally coming. And yeah, I ran out to meet him, but with so many mixed emotions. My heart really needed my friend, somebody who knew my brother, somebody that my broken heart could cry with. But every time I thought about it, I was just so mad. I was furious with Jesus. Why hadn't he come? Why would he ignore our message? He's cured so many people. Why wouldn't he cure his own friend? Even as I was running out to meet Jesus, I was running and crying. I was fuming and baffled all at the same time. And some voice in my head kept telling me that I shouldn't be so upset with him, that it isn't safe for him to come this close to Jerusalem. And I know that. Even his disciples thought that it was, if he headed this way, that it's possible that all of them might be killed. And it's true, the Roman soldiers had made it clear to all of us that they would arrest him if he came by again and drew a crowd, and drew a crowd. Funny how it is these Romans don't care if hundreds of people are gathered around to cry and mourn when someone dies. But if someone heals someone and it draws a crowd, now we have a problem? Why? Are they so afraid of his power to heal? It just doesn't make any sense. Still, he was coming, so I ran out to meet him. And I ran and I ran, and as soon as I got to him, I threw my arms around him. And before he even knew what I was doing, I was pounding my fist on his chest. Why? Why didn't you come? My brother is dead. Don't you care about him? I thought you could have stopped this. But you can, right? You can still do something, Jesus. Come on, you can still do something, right? Even as I heard the words come out of my mouth, I thought, wow, this is some denial. Four days later, and I'm still wanting this to not be real. To my amazement, Jesus said, Martha, your brother will rise. He will rise again. And I have to confess that that phrase hit me a lot like all those countless numbers of times all these hundreds of people had said to me, oh, he's in a better place. It sounded so trite and so ridiculous. I know, Jesus, I know. And the day of the resurrection, on the last day, he'll rise again. But I am the resurrection and the life. He interrupted me. And then he kind of started pounding on his own chest, like it was so important for me to pay attention to this part of what he was saying. He said, anyone who believes in me, anyone who believes in me, even if they die, they will live. 
And anyone who lives and believes in me will never really die. Do you believe me, Martha? And I took a step back because I was so shocked. Why, why are we even talking about this? We were talking about my brother. What? Yes, Lord, yes, I believe. I believe you are the Messiah. You can do anything. You are the one that God sent into the world. You're the one that was promised to us. I, I believe that. I believe that. And as soon as I heard myself say that, I thought, oh, oh, this is what the Romans are so scared of. This is exactly what the Romans are so scared of. They're so afraid that just like me, everyone else will start to say, Jesus is the Messiah. He is the one anointed by God. He is the God-given leader of the people, not Caesar. It's Jesus. And they are terrified that everyone will say what I just said. It's like Jesus is dethroning their king and sucking up all the loyalty and the hearts and minds of the people. Of course they're upset. They can't handle that. And then it was at that point that I realized just what a risk it was for Jesus to come to our house. I was still mad at him for not coming sooner. But I turned and I left and I ran to go get Mary because he wanted to talk to her. And she didn't know he was here yet. So I told her and she went. And I know she probably said the same thing that I said, if only, if only you had been here. After they talked a while, Jesus wanted to see where we had buried Lazarus. So we went out to the tomb. At that point, I was crying, Mary was crying, Jesus was crying, the friends and the mourners were all crying. It was completely overwhelming and heartbreaking. And for a moment, we kept looking to Jesus to see what would happen next, and he just stood there. He just stood there staring at the cave. It was like he was waiting for something. He just stood there, and there were tears just rolling down his face. And then it seemed like something shifted in him. And he wiped his face, and in a commanding voice, he told some of the mourners, move the stone away. And I gasped, Jesus, no, no, I mean, it already smells, don't, you can't, it's, and he raised his hand and just waved it at me as if to say, it's going to be okay. And then he said, didn't I tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So I just stood there with my hands over my mouth while a whole group of men pushed that enormous stone out away from the front of the cave. And I was just terrified. I didn't know what was going to happen next. And then Jesus stood there, looked up at the skies, and said, Papa God, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. I know that. But this I'm saying now it's for the sake of all of these people gathered here so that they will come to understand that you sent me. And after he finished the prayer, he looked at the cave and he cried out really loudly, Lazarus, come out! And it was surreal, like Ezekiel's vision had come to life in that moment. And my brother stumbled 
out of that cave, his hands and his feet bound with the same cloth that Mary and I had wrapped him in. And his face was still covered with the cloth our grandmother had embroidered. Jesus yelled to the guys who had moved the stone, Unbind him and let him go! Unbind him and let him go! Could this really be happening? Unbind him! Like he was telling them to just unwrap death off of him. Those words will ring in my memory for as long as I live. Jesus had a look on his face like he was so excited to see my brother alive again. Like he was saying, free him with enthusiasm. And just like that, my dead brother walked toward us. He was dazed and a bit confused, but there he was, walking and breathing. And he came up to us and started talking. And in just a few moments, he was talking about wanting to take a bath. I mean, we laughed and cried at the same time. We were so completely amazed. Even though Jesus had said what he said and we had all hoped against hope, I don't think I ever really imagined this. These dry bones alive. For a while, everyone just stood around kind of dumbfounded, and and then they started talking about what had happened, and, and they just stared at Jesus. There was kind of a feeling of being paralyzed, like we weren't sure, at least some people weren't sure, if they should fall at his feet because clearly this was God, or whether they should run away terrified because the power to give life back to a dead man isn't something any of us had ever believed possible. And yet here we were, witnesses to the impossible. We hugged Jesus and held on tight We hugged Lazarus and held on tight. We hugged each other. And there was this cloud of just a sense of awe hanging in the air. No one wanted to leave. We were all too mesmerized. And I think we just needed time to be really convinced that this was real. Later that night, sitting around the fire, we ate some dinner and kind of took a collective sigh. This day, we knew it would live in infamy. We talked about how Jesus, how Lazarus would be a name that every follower of Jesus would know generation after generation after generation. And we My sister and I especially, we really knew that we would never fully be able to explain why Jesus did what he did, why he waited the way he did. But despite how hurt our hearts were, we did realize that so many more people came to believe in him that day because of how he did it. We thought we knew what was best But what God had in mind seemed to be so much grander than our own personal grief. Hundreds of people had their hearts and minds convinced today that the power of God lives in our friend Jesus. I mean, how could anyone not see that Jesus is God's Messiah after a day like today. 
But I guess that's the good news and the bad news. This day brought life to my brother Lazarus, but what will it bring to my friend Jesus? What will happen to him when the news about Lazarus rising reaches the temple leaders and the Roman officials that have been watching him and paying attention to his every move? They'll come for him. Or worse yet, I heard some people talking and they said Jesus is planning to go into Jerusalem next week. Some people want to celebrate him. They want to have him ride into the city on a donkey as a king being prepared to be crowned. They say after today, there's no pretending that Jesus is anything other than God's Messiah. But the Romans will never stand for that. They'll find a way to make an example of him. I hope Jesus turns around and goes anywhere other than Jerusalem next week. It makes me so afraid for his life. I mean, if the priests and the Pharisees and the Romans get their hands on Jesus, who will unbind him? Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church. Deepen our partnerships with our companion churches around the globe, the Tanzanian Lutheran Church, the Hong Kong Synod, and the Lutheran Church of Jerusalem. Bless the work of missionaries who accompany them. Spirit of new life. Your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world and restore ecosystems in need of healing. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air all around. Spirit of new life. May our bones live again. You redeem the world and its peoples. Free us from the systems of oppression. 
unbind nations and societies from the sins of racism, sexism, and homophobia. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who will work to promote the dignity of every human life. Guide our mayor, local leaders, our governor and state legislators, our president and all national legislators. Encourage them to lead with justice and to remove barriers that impede the well-being of all that equity and peace would pervade all the regions and nations of the world. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine and Russia. Empower peacemakers with your spirit. Be near to all whose lives have been torn apart by the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Direct the work of all who endeavor to alleviate human suffering and to address its root causes. Spirit of new life. May our bones live again. Holy God, you weep when we weep. You hear us when we call to you. Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. Be present with those who grieve or who are troubled by illness, especially for Gino and his wife Connie's continued healing. The family of Jim Watt, grace and peace in his end of life moments. Joanne for strength facing her illness and more time for her. We pray also for strength for friends Sherry and Kathleen as they support and witness to her and those surrounding her. Felicia, for healing and comfort as she recuperates at home. Don Schneider, for healing and comfort as he struggles with heart complications. Stephanie Truex, for healing for the wound on her toe and for successful upcoming treatments. We pray for comfort for Brian and Lynette Woodhams as they mourn the loss of their 38-year-old son, Adam, who died following an automobile accident. Jean Christensen for healing from aggressive bladder cancer and for successful radiation and chemotherapy and iron infusion treatments. Dean Swanson, his wife Susan and family as they mourn the passing of Maja Russell. Bo for healing following renal cancer, cancer surgery and for follow-up treatments. Dana Kaminsky, for healing from recurrent breast cancer. Duffy Walton, for an easy transition for him and his wife Lynn as he fights cancer. Jacob Kalau and family for ongoing strength and healing. Owen Baker, for healing from skin cancer and successful immunotherapy. Claudia Waite, for healing from surgery for her left leg. Linda Kissler, for healing from viral encephalopathy. Kim Scott, for healing of stomach cancer. April Bryan, for healing. Sue Ivanjack, for healing of her stomach. Bob Ivanjack, for a full recovery for his shoulder. Jane and Mark Christensen as Jane awaits a heart transplant. Karen Gomez Perez, safety for her family. David Sanchez, hospitalized for liver disease. For strength and comfort for the family of Kristen Lundeen as they grieve her tragic death. Spirit of new life. Your spirit of life dwells in our assembly. Bless the music ministries of this congregation, especially John, Betty, Lisa, and all who lead us in hymns of praise and thanksgiving and in songs of lament and prayer. Spirit of new life. For what else does the congregation pray for?
You are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints who now live in your eternal love. Spirit of new life. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love, your power to save, and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share a word of God's peace to one another. Please be seated. As we receive this morning's offerings, I want to say a special word of thank you. I'm sure that Joy will mention some of it again in the announcements, but a special word of thank you to everyone who showed up at Workday, who gave your offerings of time and good spirit and good humor and skills and perseverance. And um, it w we had a very fun work day with lots and lots of students and lots of people. And that, too, is an offering. So thank you so very much. We'll receive this morning's offering now. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen.
Please stand as you're able. This is the meal that we, in which we are fed with that love that will not let us go, no matter what. This meal is for everyone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of our baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. of me. After the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to each one, saying, Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. We commune one another, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The cup of salvation given for you. We share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing our sending song. I hope you find the instruments that are in the pew racks in front of you so that you can fully celebrate.
blessing. And feel free to channel Linda Sands. We love you, Linda. We know you're watching. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth and new life, bless you in this last Lenten week of our journey. Amen. Please be seated for a couple of announcements. I'm just going to extend an, again an invitation to come next week for Palm Sunday, and then we have a Maundy Thursday supper, Good Friday services, Easter Sunday. And I especially, it's a wonderful time to invite people. If you enjoyed today's anthem, the choir is singing like 12 more anthems in the next two weeks. And it's just, it is such a gift that they give us, and I really hope that you come and your whole Holy Week experience is really uplifted by the beautiful music that expresses, I think, what our hearts want to express and don't even know how. So I hope you come and be a part of that, and I hope you invite someone to come as well. So much of the time, Lisa and I, I think, sometimes share a brain because I was just about to say some of the same things, especially about the choir music. But also, um, on your way out the door, there is a brochure that has all the details about the Holy Week services. And I would like to ask that each person take one and give it to someone. It might be the checker at the grocery store on your way through. It might be the person who cleans your house or whose house you clean. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is, but extend an invitation is my ask. Um, so take a brochure on your way out the door and, um, and just be creative with a place that you could leave it or post it or hand it to someone, okay? Sound good? Yes? Is there a link for your invite? Yes, there is. <laughs> so, so glad you should ask. <laughs> um, we will link it to the website. So all you have to do is go to the website. And um, let's see. Where is the website? When, how do you find our website? Somebody tell me. Excellent. StLukeLutheran.com. I would invite you all to open your phones right now. Go to stlukelutheran.com and see what our website looks like if you've never been to it. I'm sorry? No, we will not crash it. Not with this number of people. When you all send it to 500 people, we could try to crash it. <laughs> but then we also would probably have lots and lots of people in worship for Holy Week, so that'd be awesome. Who needs the website if everybody's already here? So. Yes, please, go to the website, share the website link, and the document will be, or the brochure will be on there. And if you print it out, it's printed eight and a half by 11 long ways. So um, you fold it in half the long ways so that it doesn't get lost with all the rest of your eight and a half by 11 papers. Okay, we ready? Any other announcements I didn't miss? Go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Praise be to God, we pray. Amen. Amen.